My life has always been on the road. My dad is a traveling preacher, and ever since I was one week old, I've traveled the United States and the world. You could say I'm a modern day nomad. One of the best parts about traveling is meeting new people, discovering new things, and getting to know more about the vast body of Christ that flows around the world. I'm Stevie, and you're watching Stevie's Treks. Welcome to Zambia! Zambia is a country of immense beauty, vibrant colors, friendly people, and a steady pace. I'm so excited about this trek. Africa is a fascinating and diverse continent, and we'll be able to see just a small portion of it by visiting Zambia. Zambia is located in the heart of Africa. Situated in the southern half of the continent, it's a little bigger than the state of Texas. The journey begins here in Lusaka, the capital of Zambia, and will end with a safari at the South Luangwa National Park. On this trek, a few of my friends will be joining me. Micah, camera one. Ryan, camera two. Ryland, our still photographer. Phil, the audio guy. Rachel, the producer, and Becca, the director. Here we are. Zambia, the real Africa. Our first stop on our trek is to Livingston, where we'll be bungee jumping, seeing one of the seven natural wonders of the world, Victoria Falls, and hopefully checking into the life of David Livingston, one of Africa's foremost missionaries. We'll be visiting three parts of Zambia. First, we'll be venturing to Livingston in the southern central part of the country. Then we'll spend time in Kitwe in the northern part of Zambia in an area known as the Copper Belt. Finally, we'll be visiting the South Luangwa National Park, which is in the central part of the country. It's 6.30 in the morning, and even in Africa, it can get a little bit chilly. We are on our way down to see one of the seven natural wonders of the world, kids, Victoria Falls. Keep your eyes peeled because there's gonna be water. The Victoria Falls is known as the smoke that thunders. All right, here we are, kids, in Victoria Falls. We're looking at the Eastern Cataract right now where it drops into the Potoka Gorge. That's where we'll be whitewater rafting down the Zambezi River. All this mist you see back here, it's mist. We're just coming off the rainy season, so it looks like a bunch of clouds. No, it's all the water billowing up. We're gonna get a little wet. Bundle up. David Livingston was the first white man to ever see the smoke that thunders, and when he saw them, he named them after his queen. Queen Victoria. We're about to cross the Rainbow Bridge. You know, don't forget to shower in the morning, kids. We want to stay clean. Let's go. Called goosebumps. <clears throat> if you notice, my hairs are sticking up because of the cold. It's very cold out here. <laughs> On that note, what an amazing display, kids, of God's creation, God's power in His creation. 
Victoria Falls, where these rushing, rushing waters come down and pummel the rocks on either side of them, hitting the bottom. Just, oh, there's so much power here. It's something we all should grasp onto in God's creation, realizing and seeing all that God is capable of. The Victoria Falls sweeping majesty is awe-inspiring. I wonder what it was like for David Livingston to be the first white man to see them. I can only imagine his surprise and astonishment as he first gazed at them. Here we are at Victoria Falls. Just learn a bit more about David Livingston, the first white man to lay eyes on these falls. It was said in 1851 was the first hearing of the falls by David Livingston. He was talking to some of the locals, and the locals described it as the smoke that thundered. But it wasn't until 1855 that he actually came to the falls and first sighted them, describing it as a sight that only angels could see from their flight. David Livingston was one of the great heroes of the 1800s. It's been said that he was the greatest man of his generation. Born in Scotland on March 19, 1813, he grew up in a little manufacturing town of Blantyre. David was raised in a Christian home, and from a very young age he had been taught that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, and that he had died for him on the cross. David was born into a Christian family with very little money. By the time he was 10 years old, he began working to help support his family. Every morning, he was awake at 5.30 a.m. and would rush to the cotton mill where he would work from 6 a.m. till 8 at night. Despite working all day, David greatly desired to have an education. And so every night from 8 to 10, he would study at the company school. Although David had heard the truths about Jesus since he was a young boy, it was not until he was 12 that he realized that he was a sinner and that he needed to personally accept that Jesus had paid for his sins on the cross. After several years, he came to accept Jesus' payment for his sins. He had found peace. This decision to accept Jesus would change the direction of his life. He said, in the glow of love that Christianity inspired, I resolved to devote my life to the alleviation of human misery. This vision and purpose would eventually lead him to the continent of Africa and finally to Zambia. We made our way to the Potoka Gorge. At the base of the gorge is the Zambeze River, one of the most distinguishable landmarks of Zambia. All right, here we are in the gorge between Zimbabwe, this side, and you do a 360 degree view. Keep, up, keep it going, keep it going. We see Zambia on this side. In the middle, the raging rapids of the Zambeze River, which we're gonna be riding. In the hands of our capable guides, we successfully navigated the rushing currents of these rapids. The immense power of the Zambeze propelled us forward, and we were in awe of the beauty of our surroundings. As we pass through the Potoka Gorge, I can't help but think of David Livingston's exploration of the Zambeze River. The powerful current and the natural beauty of this place is outstanding. Our time in Livingston is coming to a close. One more adventure remains. Bungee jumping off of the Victoria Falls Bridge. Nice. Welcome nice to the bridge. Nice. 
Don't don't talk to me about the gun. Okay, once you're on the edge, once I'm on the edge, it's sacred. Don't look down. Don't look down. Yeah, once they come fire, four, down. three, two, one, but yeah, you yeah. just Chinese. out and you jump. You have done this before, eh? No, no, no. It's first time. First time ever. Yeah, first time ever. Do not try this at home. I'm just ready to attempt to fly. I've never tried to fly before. And so I'm curious as to the outcome. I'm really excited just to spread my wing-like <laughs> figures and jump. <laughs> With the bungee jump finished, we say goodbye to Livingston and set our sight toward the next part of the trek, finding out the rest of David Livingston's story, and then on to Kitwe. On our way to Kitwe, we'll be taking a detour to the spot where David Livingston died. Today we flew from Livingston to Lusaka, and we're picked up by missionary Phil Hunt. What's up, man? <laughs> Yeah. Looking good, how are you? Good to see you. It's good to see you, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so the last few days have been just a really fun time of experiencing more of the uh, fun activities, I guess, that Zambia has to offer, or more of the tourist things. This next phase in the trek is gonna be much more of a reality check as to what local Zambians live like, what their lives are like, what's involved with their day-to-day -day, um, activities. And so the sun's setting here in our uh, trek to Kitwe, a good finish of a good day. We camped out here last night. Um, it's about, we're gonna say 5.20 in the morning. And we're gonna go right now drive to David Livingston's uh, grave, so. Put your boots on, it's gonna be a hike. On the way to his memorial, Phil and I talked about David Livingston's life and legacy in the country of Zambia. David Livingston arrived on the continent of Africa on the 17th of March, 1841. When he was young, he had heard missionary Robert Moffat describe the need of Africa. He said, Often as I look to the vast plains of the north, I have sometimes in the morning seen the smoke of a thousand villages where no missionary has ever been. A thousand villages, thought Livingston. No missionary, no gospel, no Christ, no salvation, no life, no light, nothing but sin and death and darkness. I will go to Africa. For the next 30 years, he dedicated his life to spreading the gospel, abolishing the desolate slave trade, and to exploring the undiscovered secrets of the interior of Africa. As a young man, he wrote these words, Lord, send me anywhere. Only go with me. Lay any burden on me. Only sustain me. Sever any ties but the tie that binds me to thy service and thy heart. today, Phil? We are heading up past Serenje and then 
We'll hook to the left and go back into the bush into the place where David Livingston died. How, how, um, how long of a drive is it from here? Probably four hours from here if, if things go well. During David Livingston's last few years, he lost almost all contact with the outside world. Livingston was determined not to leave Africa until he had completed his mission to discover the source of the Nile. He continued to push on until finally he could go no more. His body riddled with malaria and dysentery. He succumbed to the constant pain. In the dim of the early morning, Chuma, David Livingston's faithful friend and fellow explorer, found him knelt down next to his cot in prayer. David Livingston was dead. David Livingston was such a pillar of so many things. He was a pillar of exploration, really one of the foremost guys to uh, explore the continent of Africa, as well as to uh, put place names and to map it out for Europe. He was also very passionate about the slave trade in Africa. One of the main things and what he was concerned about was to bring commerce to Africa. And that's why he started to explore it, is so that he could map it out, take it back to Europe and have Europeans come here and see the effects of the slave trade. And by them coming here, hopefully kind of in time abolish the whole slave trade issue. He was also very passionate about every place that he went to, taking the gospel, each village, each person that he talked to, carrying the gospel with them and communicating the truth of Christ, what he did on the cross for us, and what that means to each one of us personally. Um, he was a strong man. He was a very determined person in everything that he did. He had a team of 60 people going with him throughout the bush. Imagine going through here, kids. Imagine going through this place right here without any roads, without any lights, without any um, modern necessities or modern amenities that we, that we have back in the States. And he's kind of controlling and he's taking care of 60 people, feeding them, leading the way. Imagine kind of what type of power and leadership that would have to take to map this area. Imagine the types of scary creatures you're gonna come across. Imagine the types of people you're gonna come across. How are you gonna handle this? And this man, David Livingston, handled it with strength and poise and carried the story of Jesus to each, each person, each individual that he came across. Susie and Chuma, with the help of many other dedicated men, buried David Livingston's heart at the base of a Mupundu tree and carried his body all the way back to the coast where he was taken back to England. Even to today, David Livingston's legacy lives on. His reputation as a man of God and a man for the people of Africa has persevered. Although David Livingston's life and mission ended at Chief Chitabo's village, the life of the gospel in Zambia has never gone out. To discover more about the people, culture, and church in Zambia, we're off to Kitwe. Kitwe is the third largest city in Zambia. It's the center of the Copper Belt, Zambia's copper mining region. It's also the hub of many new ministries in Zambia. While we're here, we'll be able to talk to a lot of the local Christians about their lives, as well as learn more about the ministries in the area. Faith Baptist Church School. After chapel, we had the opportunity to interview a few of the students and learn more about what it's like growing up in Zambia. What would be your favorite thing about living in Zambia? Because it's a peaceful country and there's like, we've never faced like hole in our country. It's always peaceful, though we might face other like difficult 
the difficulties, it's not that much. Now, if there was one thing that you would say, this is my favorite thing about Zambia, what would that one thing be? That one thing would be uh, Nshima. Nshima is a kind of food that uh, Zambians uh, are used to. The way Nshima looks is it's white. Okay. Sometimes uh, you can find you can find it a uh, little brown. Okay. And uh, the thing that I like about Nshima is that it tastes it tastes so good. One Zambian food that you love the most. Nshima. Nshima. Ah, you're not the first to say this. <laughs> what do you like about it? Well, um, it's tasteless, and you can eat it with about you can eat it with about almost everything. Everything, everything like what? Like what do you eat it with? Uh, you can eat it with um, chicken, meat, sausage, T-bone, mm. relish, vegetable, different kind of vegetables, rape. Mm, very um, good. Caterpillar. <laughs> caterpillar. Ah, very good. Do you eat caterpillar? Sometimes. Sometimes is it good? It's very good. What's it taste like? Tastes. It has its own taste. So. Ah. Mm, it's squishy. Squishy. So not dried caterpillar? Uh, sometimes dried caterpillar, but the inside sometimes a bit chewy. Ah, uh, right, right. Very interesting. After learning more about Zambia from the kids at Faith Baptist Church School, it's time for lunch. Yeah, so in different countries, we have what you call a market. So we're going to go experience the market. We're going to go see what the market has to offer, what it doesn't have to offer, what's cool about it, what's not cool about it. That's this fine. is our fearless driving team. Yeah, yes, this is the Canada's driving team. Here we are. <laughs> Kitwe. Welcome to Kitwe. We're having a traditional Zambian meal at Esther's place. Right now we're just waiting for the food to arrive. There's a nice pleasant aroma. Use your senses. They're very tasty as well. This is this. Ah, oh, good, good. These are the famous guys. Yeah, yeah. You want to try for us? Sure. Like very tasty food. Yeah, yeah. I can have, I can have the whole plate. We've got a dried caterpillar. This is um cow legs. Cow legs. Yes, cow legs. So this is called ipimbombo. <laughs> Cow legs. Yes, another plate. This is capenka. They're very tasty as well. So we have dried small fishes, some caterpillars, dried bean leaves. Right. Esther has been kind enough to cook for us very traditional Zambian style food. And we thank her very much. Thank you. So now we, now's the part where we, we dig in. So we're gonna grab a bit of everything. Uh, I need to start passing. It's kind of like a, a jelly thick substance. <laughs> Made out of cornmeal, so really hot. It's best eaten when it's hot too, so. See this? It's kind of like sticky. Then you take this, a little bit of this, and you eat it. Okay, I uh Okay. Tasty. Yeah, yeah. Just bite off it. Just bite off it. Bite off it. This is. This is I'm gonna switch sides. Yeah, yeah. This is cowlick, you say. Cowlick. 
Do you want to have the camera now? No, you're doing great. Oh, I'm doing good. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of like, what is it like? Like, give me some time. soft fat. It's very, it's very fatty. It kind of is like pork. It's kind of like... Uncooked bacon, but a little lukewarm. No? Yeah, lukewarm, uncooked bacon, sticky, very fatty. Very sticky. Very sticky. It's very right? sticky. Yeah, yeah. Glue is made out of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is true. Glue is made out of this. After the wonderful meal at Esther's, she decided to take us on a quick tour of the market. So as you can tell, we're kind of in the fish market right now. It smells a little fishy. It was crazy. People everywhere, buying and selling. Everywhere we turned, something new was thrust in front of us. I think shopping in the market all the time would take some getting used to, but I think I like it. Okay, we had a really awesome, intense day in the Kitwe market. We had an amazing meal at Esther's, and overall it was just super fun, a great experience. A lot of new smells, a lot of new sights, new faces. It was great. While we're visiting Kitwe, we've been invited to spend a few days at the Faith Children's Village. The kids walk every day back and forth from school. Today, we'll be joining them. The goal of Faith Children's Village is to provide a loving home in a Christian environment for children who have been left without parents. It's estimated that 27% of all children in Zambia have lost their mother, father, or both parents. The number of orphaned children who live on the streets in Zambia has increased 250% in the past 10 years. This crisis has been brought on by the epidemic of HIV-AIDS. The village was started in 2004 by Phil and Lori Hunt, along with the IFM mission team. God provided 13 acres of land in a rural farm setting just 18 miles outside of Kitwe. Okay, so either radio or cell tower, Mike and I climbed just to get kind of a nice vista of Keatway off in the distance, as you can see. And then down straight below us is the Faith uh, Children's Orphanage. And so just kind of checking out the terrain. It's beautiful up here, guys. It's beautiful. If you can come and check it out with me here, we have a number of houses. We have about five houses of uh, boys and girls that are sponsored by people in the States. Then we kind of have, uh, you can't really make it out through the trees, we kind of have like a meeting area type chapel. Faith Children's Village has about 52 kids that are all sponsored by people in the States and it's really an awesome ministry to reach out to the country of Zambia. About 40% of the country um, has AIDS and uh, many the, and the average lifespan is only about 38. So there are many, many children left without parents. So the small part that Faith Children's Village can do um, is really a big help, especially having it um, under the influence of Bible-believing Christians and under the influence of the gospel, and it really raises these kids up with um, a biblical worldview. So it's a great ministry. What I noticed while I was at FCV was that the kids spent most of their time playing outside and playing with each other. The village was so quiet compared to the bustling noises of the market and downtown Kitwe. I really enjoyed the time at the village because I had time just to hang out, talk, and listen. Here in Zambia, our favorite food is Shima. And rice with carpenter. Listen and beans. And Sometimes beans. we also and chicken. Oh, the, the game we like is football. Yeah, football is very, very much nice. Much nice, nice. We like we like football because it's nice and we support we support teams, different teams. Yes. Ah, look, yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> Hello. Hey, I want to know your names. You? Right here, you see this? Okay, <laughs> I want to know your names. All right, so we're going to start here, and we're going to go around here. What's your name? Joseph Pierre. Joseph. 
Piele. Piele. What's your name? Pumsen. Pumsen. Drogba. Drogba. No, no, no. <laughs> your name's not Drogba. What's your name? My name is Pumsen. Pumsen. Oh, and your name? Just a rogue. <laughs> no, no, no. I need it's your real me. name. Oh, Mumba Fumpa. Mumba Fumba. 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 Yeah. Okay, your name. Max. Max. This guy. Max Valdez. Max Valdez. Max Valdez. And what's your name? Dumisan. Ah, what's your name? My name is Tashmeo Kango. Nice to meet you. We already know you. My name is Stevie. Stevie. And these are my friends that I'm making at Faith Children's Village. Yeah. They're awesome. That is good. That is good. Yeah? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like yeah, yeah. this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> During our time at FCV, we were invited to spend our meals with many of the houses. One of the nights we were there, we were invited to House One for dinner. As we ate dinner, I noticed the boys were kind of being shy, so I pulled out my guitar and sang them a few songs. And pretty soon we were going back and forth singing songs to each other. Soon we were going back and forth singing songs to each other. Our last night there, we had a bonfire, and the kids sang and gave testimonies. What I noticed most, though, was the testimonies of the children. Many of them communicated to me or to the crew how thankful they were for the gospel and the reality that Jesus had died for them and set them free. All of a sudden, the kids started singing a really special song just for us. So we're circling the fire and this kid comes up to me, his name was Maka, and he says, Stevie, do you know what we're singing? Do you know what we're saying? And I was like, no, I, I don't know what we're saying. And he goes, we're going to Jerusalem. We're going to heaven. All the kids were circling around the fire, singing praise and thanks to God that someday soon we'll all be with him in heaven. It's been an amazing experience. The kids are filled with smiles and so much joy, and they sing beautifully. And they've been such a blessing, I think, to the team uh, that we are leaving refreshed. Every good gift is from above, and we should take it like that. So these kids have been an excellent example of what true joy is. And then this one. Over the next few days, we were able to visit the ministries of Chapada, Quacha, and Riverside. I was amazed at the passion and character of the men and women, as well as their commitment to the Word of God and to the Gospel. Today we're going to be uh, looking into the ministry of Pastor Pius in the Quacha community. Please, you're welcome. I'm Pius Chanda, I'm the pastor of this church. Uh, this is a ministry that began way back uh, in 2005. So it is really a ministry that surely is growing 
slowly by sure. Like I said, that most of the community around here are out of employment and their survival depends on the small shelters that they have. That also makes it very difficult, especially for some of them to be fully committed to the work of God because they are looking for survival here and there. But we are here to remind them and to encourage them at the same time to say man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And that we are sojourners in this country, in this world, so to say. We all have to have a purpose in life because we are heading somewhere. And that is a place that the Lord Jesus Christ has gone to prepare before us because he assured us. And we really need to give them that assurance that the only way that they really have to live for is to live for Christ. Because one day, this world is coming to an end. And we want people to understand that they need to accept Jesus Christ if they need to have life. God has really brought this community of believers together and it's been so exciting to see this promising ministry. God has been so good bringing this community of believers, making them tight, surrounded by the gospel. And it's been great just to see the many blessings that God has given Faith Baptist Church in Quacha. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Today we've had the opportunity to come to the Chingolo Road Cemetery, which is the local cemetery here in Kitwe, Zambia. The average life expectancy in Zambia ranges from 35 to 38, and on an average week, uh, the cemetery here will have from 70 to 100 uh, funerals. Being here at the cemetery just grips your heart because there's so many, so many graves here, and it's, it's a daily occurrence. Life is short and but a vapor. How are we loving our neighbor as ourself? Are we giving them the good news of Jesus? Are we going next door and telling people of what Jesus has done for us? Are you going to be obedient to what Christ has commanded us to do? Go out and make disciples? Or are we going to spend our time with something else? The Chingola Road Cemetery has put a face on the AIDS crisis in Zambia for me. It's hard to grasp the extent of suffering that this disease has caused. Yet I find that there is really hope here as well. The children at FCV have shown me how joyful and wonderful life can be. They have truly been a light of the gospel. Okay, here we are, coming to the close of our second leg in Kitwe, Zambia. We have had an amazing time getting to know some of the people in Faith Baptist Church. We also got to spend some time with some of the kids in Faith Children's Village. We've seen some crazy sights, smelled some very new smells, and tasted the ethnic food here in Zambia. God has blessed us in our trip in Kitwe, and we're so grateful for all the time that we've spent here. With our trek to Kitwe coming to a close, my heart is full from our time with the body of Christ that is thriving here in the heart of Central Africa. Okay kids, our last two days in Zambia are spent at the South Luangwa National Park, looking to see if we can catch a glimpse of some more of the Big Five.
Today, hopefully we can see at least a few of the big five. Now the big five are kind of the, uh, the main animals that define the continent of Africa. The rhino, the lion, the elephant, the Cape buffalo, and the leopard. So hopefully we can get an eye on at least a few of those today. Throughout the morning and into the afternoon, we discovered hippos, impala, so many amazing elephants, and even some Nile crocodiles. The giraffe is slobbering. He gets really excited when he can eat tasty tree leaves. I don't know about you kids. I'm not a fan of eating tree leaves, but these guys are. It's called a peace offering. I take a bite, and then I say, oh, tasty to my taste buds. And I go, then I go to the draft. waiting for them to partake of the tastiness. But as you can see, they're fairly disinterested. But at least we tried. Mmm, date bread. <laughs> okay. Kids, it's about 7.15 in the South Malanga Park, and we just rolled up <coughs> next to one of the big five, the Cape Buffalo, otherwise known as the African Buffalo. Take a look. <coughs> There's a leopard on the move. So we're making our way to find the big cat. Okay kids, that was a look at an African leopard. So intense, it was great. The South Luangwa National Park was full of amazing animals. Driving back through the park, I paused and took stock of our trek. At every step of our journey through Zambia, God revealed something new. In Livingston, God showed me his power, both in the breathtaking beauty of Victoria Falls and in the story of his servant, David Livingston. In Kitwe, God opened my eyes and my heart to the people of Zambia. We made many new friends and discovered the passion and love for the Lord that many of the Zambian Christians share. In South Luangwa, I was once again reminded of how amazing and beautiful our earth is, and I stand in awe of God's creation. What has really stuck out to me, though, is the people. The many Christians we have met here have reminded me how big and wonderful the body of Christ is. After trekking through Zambia, I know that God has an amazing plan for this country, a plan that started 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but whoever believes on Jesus will not perish but have everlasting life. After trekking Zambia, I know that life is short, 
and the hearts of many people here are in need of the good news of Jesus. Maybe the Lord will call you to go here and share with them the love of Jesus Christ. Until next time, kids, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace.